On December 7, 1941, native Hawaiian Hoila Kaleohana was sitting on his porch overlooking a field outside his house on the island of Nihau. At around noon, Kaleohana was alarmed, as anyone would be, to find a Mitsubishi A6M0 fighter jet crashing directly into his lawn. Inspecting the crash, Kaleohano found a dazed and confused Japanese soldier and quickly relieved him of his gun and paperwork while ushering the confused man into his house for coffee and food. Little did Hawila Kaleohano know, however, that this man had just taken part in the deadliest wartime attack on American soil ever, and his offer of a coffee and cigarette breakfast would unintentionally cause one of the strangest fugitive crises in the history of World War II. Before I get to that, I have to set the scene here, because Nihau is weird, and it being so weird is why this situation got as out of hand as it did. See, Nihau is a Hawaiian island you probably haven't heard of in the cultural lexicon around the islands, because you can't go there. Nihau is a private island, and has been for over 150 years. I did not think that private islands were a thing before the modern day in Plains, but I guess rich people are a universal weirdo constant in this world. After the Hawaiian unification under King Kamehameha, which, side note, it's really funny that it's called the Hawaiian unification when he just basically invaded and took over all the neighboring islands. I don't know how King Kamehameha is viewed in Hawaiian culture, but it's kind of like saying that Alexander the Great unified ancient Macedonia. Anyway, after Hawaii was Hawaii, in 1864 King Kamehameha's descendant, also King Kamehameha but the fifth one, sold off the island that gave his ancestors so much trouble to conquer for $10,000. In today's money, that's about 200 k so, you know, I, I guess not bad, but you gotta be in dire straits to start offering chunks of your country for as much as a townhouse in Tulsa. The buyer was one Elizabeth Sinclair, the woman with the most rich name I've ever heard. If she were to name her kid Archibald, I dare say he'd make Mansa Musa look like a Walmart greeter. She bought the island to raise her family on, which seems like a noble enough reason until you realize that the island already had 400 people on it and none of them could leave without her approval now. She set up a plantation, and I think you can tell where this is going. From what I read, it doesn't seem as bad as it sounds on paper, but it really, really sounds bad on paper. Like, this paper is fucked up, man. Later on, one of her descendants would completely close the island to outsiders, which is... So, let's ignore the optics of this totally not a slave island, because it isn't super important to the story at hand. Meet Shigenori Nishikaichi. He is a Japanese pilot in the Air Force, and he did Pearl Harbor. Well, he's one of the ones that did Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor, if you're five years old, was a surprise attack that launched the U.S. into World War II when they really wanted nothing to do with it. The secret is that the U.S. really liked fascism and wanted the Axis to win, but had to appear neutral because they were allies with Britain. They had recently put an oil embargo on Japan, so Japan escalated the situation by blowing the base in Hawaii to Kingdom Come as part of their Pacific expansion. And this guy, fresh off the heels of bombing thousands of American soldiers to smithereens, had crashed his plane in America. This genius move was because the Japanese army believed Nihau to be completely uninhabited, so if anyone needed to crash land, they were directed towards it. Unfortunately for Nishikaichi, he was met with Farmer with Shotgun as soon as he awoke. Now, because there's like 200 people on Nihau at this point and everyone knows each other, Kaleohano leaves the soldier to go find the few other people on the island who spoke Japanese. It should be noted that Nishikaichi did speak English, but it was so bad that it was worth risking an international incident over. Kaleohano brings in Ishimatsu Shintani, a beekeeper and geriatric who can speak Japanese. He speaks with Nishikaichi for two minutes and immediately leaves. Second plan, Yoshio Harada, a 38-year-old accountant for the current owner of the island. Him and his wife were both from Japan and spoke fluently, and boy did him and the crash pilot hit it off. It's almost like they're planning something the way they're shooting the shit. Something I have neglected to mention was that Nishikaichi was not in any way protective of his identity and what he did. The beekeeper who he had spoken to for about two minutes did not leave an offense because of something Nishikaichi said, but because in that amount of time he heard about Pearl Harbor, who Nishikaichi was, what part he played in it, his social security number, his favorite One Direction song, all that. He was so bold that he asked Shintani to bribe Kaleohano for his papers back. Now, Kaleohana was up on the news. Nihau was isolated, and while the news of Pearl Harbor hadn't hit them, Kaleohana was aware of the tensions between the U.S. and Japan, hence why he confiscated his documents and the gun as soon as the plane crashed. So, this skeptical man is approached by a beekeeper with a bribe of a crisp 200 yen. Now, you may be thinking like I did. This guy falls out of the sky, and the best he can do to get on someone's good side is give them two dollars? 
Actually, it's not that. The yen was worth about 20 cents in 1941. Still, bribing your way out of a war crime with a total of $40 is not much better. I think not going to Nuremberg is worth at least a new Switch game. So the bribe fails and Shintani is so embarrassed that he leaves the story entirely. He does not do anything else, and I want you to remember that when the US Army gets involved later. Harada is much more easily convinced to help Nishikaichi out. See, Nishikaichi told him that Japan is going to win the war quickly and he needed his papers back because they had secret codes on them. The war that had officially started about three hours ago. Either he was on that Dr. Breen hopium or he was a master of blowing smoke up people's ass because Harada and his wife both bought it entirely. Harada and Nishikaichi decided to go steal the only other gun on the entire island, the one in the Robinsons' ranch. I don't really know how, but it says that Irene distracted the guard and they managed to beat him senseless and take the gun. After that, they went to go get the papers back. At this point, Kaleo Hano, with no knowledge of the secret guerrilla operation going on across the island, is on the outhouse toilet when he hears his house being broken into. He does not get off the toilet to investigate. And that's how Nishikaichi got his gun back. No papers, though. The two proceed to loot the plane for ammo and a machine gun and set it on fire. Kaleo Hano, finally done shitting, exits the toilet and sees the flaming airplane and just walks the other way. The two try and shoot a warning shot to get him to stop, but he just kinda keeps going towards the village. Kaleo Hano arrives in the village and gets six others to help him take a boat to Kauai to get help. The entire event would be over before they returned. Harada and Nishikaichi are pissed. They enter the village, guns blazing, to try and hunt down Kaleo Hano and kill him. They kick in doors, shooting anyone they saw in the village to death. That is, no one. They saw no one. Because everyone in the village had left to go to Kauai. After unsuccessfully holding a man hostage in an attempt to get the population of the island to come out of hiding, which ended with them just telling him to go home, they return to Kaleohano's house and torch it in an attempt to burn the papers. While watching the blaze, the two realize their predicament when they returned to the cart they had been carrying everything in and found that the man who they had held captive had stolen their machine gun. Oops. The next day, the two returned to the village and found two more people. Ben and Ella Kalahere, who were looking for food in the abandoned village, and I'll quote one of my sources here, after Ben's nightly adventure. What does that mean? I don't know. The two held the Hawaiians hostage, forcing Ben to go look for Kale Ohano, who at this point was on Kauai, presumably doing something that would have been important if the situation wasn't about to resolve itself. When he came back empty-handed, Nishikaichi began berating Ben in broken English while Harada sheepishly watched. After a while of this, Ben asked Harada in Hawaiian to take Nishikaichi's gun before he hurt someone, much how you would tell a child to take that pointy stick from their younger brother. Harada goes to reload Nishikaichi's pistol in response, and during the exchange, Ben jumps the pilot and tries to get him to drop the gun. This does not work, and Ben is shot in the balls for it, but he gets up like a champ and throws Nishikaichi into a wall while being shot. His wife, Ella, promptly goes over to Nishikaichi and caves his head in with a rock. Very similar to the Clipperton Island story this one is. Harada, seeing this, immediately pulls out his shotgun and just eats it. And that's how the story of the Nihau incident ended. Not with the intervention of the US Army and Coast Guard, but with a really tall Hawaiian guy with one less testicle. The US Army does eventually arrive though, and for her assistance in all the attempted war crimes, Irene Harada gets 31 months in jail. Sounds fair, right? She didn't do too much, but she did do a bad thing and should be punished for it. Yeah, the, the beekeeper gets sent to a concentration camp. The beekeeper whose only crime was to try and give someone $40 for a piece of paper got sent to a Japanese internment camp until 1946. Yeah. He was on the boat to Kauai, too. He was one of the ones getting help, and they locked him up and threw away the key. Eventually, he did get out and get citizenship in 1960, but man, man. Nowadays, Nihau is even more deserted, with around 150 people living on it by census records. It's no longer completely off-limits to tourists, though, so if you wanted to see the site of the incident, you can. The Robinson family has even offered hunting tours for anyone who wants to go kill exotic animals that are found nowhere else on Earth. You know, they're allowed to keep this island private because they tell the Hawaiian government it's for conservational purposes. No reason to bring that up, I just thought it was a fun tidbit. I think this whole incident is fun because it proves to me that no matter your place in society, no matter what your job is or your history, anyone can become such a colossal fuck-up that there are monuments dedicated to your failure for decades to come. I find that a little inspiring. Also, there's no fucking way there's not a sex cult on that island. You have a family of rich elites living there for centuries and you're telling me- 
Hi, this is the outro. I don't, I, uh, I don't have a whole lot to say this time. Uh, I got a big video in the works, but uh, it's currently up in the air. When we're actually going to be able to do the boots on the ground part of that, uh, so stay tuned. Uh, I got some other smaller topics to work on, and uh, hopefully you'll be seeing them soon. Alright, see ya.